Idu, a title that begins with an ellipsis and roughly translates to several different things. Some say, behind you, others say, we're here, they're here, it's here, or something's here. And yet others even say that it's a fermented African locust bean. In any event, Iru is a fantastic little first-person Japanese high school horror game developed by Soft Machine in 1998. Soft Machine, not to be confused with the 60s British rock band of the same name, was founded in 1989 and created games until the year 2000. They developed Crisis Beat and Lucifer Ring on the PlayStation. They worked on the Wonderswan ports of Pocket Fighter and Final Lap 2000, as well as Championship Bowling, aka Boogie Woogie Bowling, and Top Pro Golf on the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. Soft Machine also developed the first entry in the Quiz Avenue series on the PC Engine CD, in addition to Astro Fang Super Machine and Super Pinball on the original Famicom. Iru was published by Takara and had a second release in the Japanese Best of PlayStation series, which is akin to the American Greatest Hits series. Though, I'm basing this off of two images that have circulated online, because the actual wiki for the Best Of series doesn't list the game here for some reason. Before we jump into the game, I have to mention the fan-made English patch that was put together in July of 2021. Without this, I wouldn't have been able to fully experience this game. It's pretty obvious that liberties were taken with the localization, but that's almost always necessary in situations like this. Ultimately, a lot of hard work was put into doing this, so I think it's important that we thank Esper Knight, Snowy Aria, Mr. Nobody, Cargoden, Blue Sky Runner, and Turn Up the Beat. I'll put the link for the patch in the video description, but that's enough of all that. Let's get on to this neat little slice of history here. Iru takes place at a high school on a small island in Japan. It's the night before an annual festival held at the school, and the moon is full. You're playing as Inaba, a young student that is helping to set up decorations for the event with his classmates. Things quickly go south as the students realize they are trapped in the building. Some of the kids begin to lose their minds and murder each other. References to the occult make increasing appearances as monsters straight out of the Cthulhu mythos enter the school from another realm and kill some of the students and faculty. There are at least a dozen direct references to the likes of H.P. Lovecraft and Robert W. Chambers, which is really cool. The cast is made up of an assortment of personalities, some memorable and others cliché. Hikawa is a campy, two-dimensional bully, and Hoju is a sultry art teacher who is clearly keeping a big secret. There's a fat guy that only talks about food, and two love interests named Yuma and Ri. Mochizuki is a student that is looking for his long-lost brother, who was previously in attendance of this high school and may or may not have had an affair with the aforementioned art teacher, Hoju. He seems to be torn into split personalities as he suffers through the search for his brother. The overall story will take you through the past of your high school and the island it inhabits. Cultish rituals will happen, blood will spill, and you'll be left under the aura of the full moon, wishing you could turn back time. At times the whole thing can feel like a giallo film by Dario Argento or Mario Bava, which helps to explain why some people have compared this to the game Clock Tower. I'll pretty much leave the narrative here as I don't want to ruin anything for you, Though I will say that there are several branching paths and multiple endings, all of which I experienced and am honestly glad that I did. The game is played in first person view, and unfortunately it suffers from PlayStation 1 era first person controls, though you do get used to them. The D-pad moves you forward and backward, while also turning you left and right. L1 and R1 are for strafing, and L2 and R2 are for looking up and down. Thankfully you can run with X, so the tedium of traveling back and forth between classrooms is lessened somewhat. Speaking of which, yeah, you'll be doing that a lot. Honestly, it's my biggest criticism of this game. Things get more monotonous when you realize that you have to just run back and forth between the same several dozen rooms in hopes of triggering the next event. Oftentimes, there are dialogue clues about which room to check next, but mostly it's vague, and you'll be second-guessing yourself because you will have already visited that room like 8 million times, along with the others. There are actually very few item-based puzzles in the game, now that I think about it. There's a significant moment when you have to mix chemicals, there are keys, tools, hidden levers, you know, all of the survival horror stuff that you would expect. But again, I feel like this was kept to a minimum. There are no combat or action segments whatsoever. Instead, there are a small handful of these situations where you have to hide before the monster or crazy student comes in the room and murders you. 
The time is displayed by this thing up at the top, and these parts are always super easy. Just select the box or the podium or whatever and you're good. My favorite part of this game has to be the music. There are only like five tracks tops, but they're all so great. The tone is set so well as you creep through the hallways of this high school sitting on a small patch of land surrounded by miles of water. You never even see the ocean outside, but somehow I can feel it there. Considering the limited draw distance in this game, I could see how someone might argue against it, but I stand by it when I say that the liminal space is truly felt here. Something is off and something is eerie. Little things like this item menu get me. Just the way it sounds and looks, it puts me in a mood I can't quite describe. And I'm such a sucker for items you can move around and examine from this era. Rudimentary 3D models like this are so cool. The rooms in the high school are detailed well, making them feel like an actual school with actual students. The art room has art supplies, the science room has chemistry sets, and the career room has... Did you see that? out the window. Right there. You know, actually I kind of want to derail here for just a minute. This is something I've been thinking about since I was a kid. This weird feeling you get when you look through low detail windows in older games. It always intrigued me in a way like no other. I don't know. Maybe I needed to get out more or something, but the odd sensation of wondering what is out there usually stopped me in my tracks as a kid. I used to obsess over this kind of thing. It happened with Ocarina of Time. That window everyone knows about with the Mario portraits. I always wanted to know what was around the corner from that, or what was around the corner from the window on the other side of the courtyard. Furthermore, I wanted to know what was in the window high up on the wall. There weren't any other windows like that there. There's this window in Mixed Up Mother Goose that held my adolescent mind captive. And this one with this kid in a nightgown. Or here it happened in Pepper's Adventures in Time in a way that was perceivably color and upbeat, but just came off as being eerie to me. What was to be found just past those round hills? I was a weird kid and I liked imagining that these worlds went well beyond what we were seeing on screen. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a window. Many of you remember this area in the first level of Goldeneye. It's heavily covered online now and considered a popular piece of childhood wonder, which makes me feel less isolated about these things. Hell, Kirko Mods, a popular N64 ROM hacker and game designer, put out the fantastic Banjo-Kazooie mod, Stay at Home, which let you actually reach this area in a GoldenEye crossover level. Anyways, this was a huge source of mystery for me, back before I could go online and talk to people about it. One of my first feelings with all of this was in a game called Dare to Dream. This alley leading to this boat dock has occupied my dreams for years since playing this game as a kid. The moon and the night sky, made with such a small color palette, it mystified me. Because I'm tired of leaving this feeling up in the air, I want to attempt to define it with a title. We're going to call it um, Minimal Detail Mystery, MDM. Nah, actually, I don't like that at all. How about Low Detail Lore, like LDL, I like that more. I don't really want to keep it as an acronym though, so let's like combine it. I don't care how stupid this sounds. We're going to go with Low Delore. From now on, I'm using Low Delore for this kind of thing, or Lodeller. Lodeller? Yeah. 
You're going to see it pop up a lot on this channel because I like to talk about the strange sensation that comes with these types of games. Lodeller, the feeling of intense wonder brought on by graphical limitation. Well, sorry for going way off topic there, but I felt it was necessary. Overall, Iru is a creepy little experience that is well worth your time. I beat it in about 4 hours, so if you're looking to just pick up and play a short horror game, this is perfect. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and be nice to people. Bye.